It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the show. With me in the KFG studio, certified financial planner, the founder of Corhorn Financial Group, Kevin Corhorn, and back in the studio, insurance expert, Alicia Boehner. Yeah, do you have a habit of reviewing your home and auto insurance coverages on a regular basis? If you <laughs> I don't know why that's funny to me. But if you did, would you know what to look for or what to look for? So today on, Wise, on the Wise Money Show, we're joined by insurance advisor and expert, Alicia Boehner, to help us know how often you should review your insurance and what the process should look like. That's right. All right. We've got, uh, again, several great questions uh, related to insurance that we're going to pepper Alicia with. One of them is, should you expect your insurance to go down when you're retired and driving less, maybe on Social Security and so on? Should you expect your insurance to go down? That's a good good question. We're going to hit that and more. If you have a question, reach out to us. You can find us online, wisemoneyshow.com. So I'm going to question right there on the right. You can call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. And then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. Just search The Wise Money Show. You can submit questions there as well. Okay, so when's the last time you reviewed your home and auto insurance? I moved from Michigan to Indiana when I was, I'm going to say 22, although Kevin likes to joke that after I graduated college, I took a hiatus for years and years before joining the team. It was two weeks. Felt like it. (laughs) Felt like it. (laughs) But so I moved down to, to Indiana, and I remember we started, we didn't start our insurance agency at Corhorn Financial Group until 06, but back in 03 and 04, we, are, of course, were giving advice on insurance, and this, that's why we started our agency here is because we want to provide a full service. But we were giving advice, and I remember learning from Kevin and from Josh, wait, 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 that's how this coverage works? And maybe I was naive because I was young. Maybe I was naive because I was in this bubble, bubble called no-fault insurance, and I didn't really need to know. But I was like, well, that's what your 100, 300 coverage actually means? Yeah. And, and wait, I, I actually need renter's insurance. Um, so I was quite a bit naive. I, I guess I'd ask you guys, as new people are coming in, do, does the average new person have a good familiarity with what their coverage is and why? No. No? Absolutely not. Most people, when I ask them, how well do you understand your insurance? Should we go over all the coverages line by line? Even those that initially say, oh, I think I have a pretty good grip, say, well, it wouldn't hurt to review it again. Yeah. And then that's one of the huge values of sitting down and meeting with someone in person is I think that what you get from that is just so much more in depth than what you get over the phone or through an email. And so I can't underscore enough the importance of meeting in person for a review if you can. I know we're in a society that doesn't want to, but say yes to your agent. Throw them, throw them a bone on this one. Meet in person. <laughs> what would you say, Kevin? Yeah, I would. I would say, and just from personal experience, and I've been interested in uh, business. I've been interested in um, entrepreneurial things. And so insurance is a component of this. And I have had a an exceedingly difficult time understanding what insurance is and how it works. Um, now, over time, I've come to understand it, but it's very easy to um, – I remember the days of I would sit and listen to my agent explain why it costs so much. Mm-hmm. And then I would say, is there anything I could change? And they would say, well, you could change this, but you don't want to, and this and this and this. And I I would grasp it for just a, a fleeting moment, and then I would walk out, and but I, I couldn't repeat it to my wife. Mm-hmm. It was. It wasn't where it, it made sense, and it was logical, and and these are terms that really um, you don't deal with. Right. I mean, this is not. This is not part for most people. This is not part of the the flow of their everyday life. So it's it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, it's a different language. It's it's very much confusing. So if you if it's hard to even understand what your coverage is and how it works. How do you arrive at the right at the right coverage in the first place? And so hopefully 
you've gone through the financial planning process, what we call one plan, to determine what the appropriate amount of coverage is. Obviously, the best coverage is for whatever accident you're going to have in the future, but that's unknowable. So what is knowable is your financial life and your circumstance. And so hopefully you went through the financial planning process to figure out what your coverage is. But once there, is it set it and forget it? How often should someone review their insurance, Alicia? I mean, it's different for every person, but I think if you can review annually, that's ideal because so many things change throughout the year that people don't even realize impact their insurance. And and that's kind of what Kevin's alluding to is most people are walking around, they're just living their daily lives. You know, Christmas came, I got a pit bull. They don't realize that puppy. We're thinking <laughs> the insurance agent's just like, why didn't you call me? Why didn't you tell me you got a pit bull puppy for Christmas? Didn't you think about that? And wrap that one under the tree. Right. <laughs> I don't think it made it. I think it ate through the paper. Anyway. But the, the most simple things, the most simple purchases can change your insurance coverage and program. And so if we're not aware, we can't help. And the more frequently we review, the more likely it is that we're going to catch all those little things that happen day in and day out. Yeah, I mean, the, the, my pit bull doesn't like to go out to the beehives, but it does like the Burmese python <laughs> and, 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 as it jumps on the trampoline <laughs> and after swimming in the swimming pool. So, But a lot of times people think, well, I really – it's kind of a don't ask, don't tell policy. Like it's it's kind of like the the, the little kids, uh, you know, when the, we were playing hide and go seek when the kids were two and three and they'd cover their eyes and they would think we didn't see them. <laughs> um, but I think a lot of times it's like that. Or I've I've known folks that their um, their sixteen year old got their driver's license and this, for whatever reason their insurance agent didn't know that they had a youthful driver in the house. And so they're thinking, well, if we don't tell our insurance company, our insurance costs won't go up. But the, the, the risk that you bring upon yourself is really, really unnecessary. Mm. It's so much easier to find a solution before the claim happens. Sure. So much easier than to try to clean something up after the fact because sometimes you can't. Okay. So what I heard is, uh, is don't buy anyone a pit bull for Christmas. <laughs> and then second... Um, that you should be reviewing your insurance coverages at at least once a year. Now, you know, maybe this is Cavalier's kids. I don't do it that frequently, but I would say mine's probably every two years mm-hmm. I'm I'm checking in. Um, but you also mentioned this, uh, something that I, I think is typical of most people, that life starts changing mm-hmm. and they're, and it's just, they have, they don't even think to contact their agent. Kevin says, well, I'm intentionally not going to, and there's probably a good bit of that too, but when when I, should you reach I out? Am. I personally am. <laughs> you, you avoid I, I, Alicia. I, I, no, I no. I'm 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 definitely checking with my agent. But that I know. Well, I know people. I know people that own businesses that that um, when we're talking, uh, and I've I've talked with someone, and they said, well, you know, I insure my business for X, and. Um, would you ever want to take a look at it? I'm like, well, you're not paying enough to insure this business. And they're like, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you knowingly have the wrong coverage, and the truth is the wrong coverage is, is fine as long as nothing ever happens. I know. Isn't that strange mm-hmm. that we get insurance because we need the coverage or you might just feel some guilt or obligation, but then getting making sure that it's the right coverage, I think you just – view that, well, I'm pulling a fast one. I'm, I'm getting away with something and this is good, right. but it's, it's not. I mean, if you, if you have a, if you have an incident, you're going to be relying on that coverage and if it's the wrong coverage. Okay. So as life is going on, how often should you reach out to your insurance agent? I mean, and, and for what things, like what things need to happen in your life, Alicia, where you'd say, I'd expect someone to call me if this happened. Great question. Major driver changes. If someone moves into the home or leaves the home, that is something we would always want one of our clients to call and let us know about because it can change whether or not that person has coverage under the insurance or does not. You don't want to find out that someone that's living in the house doesn't have coverage under your policy. You might assume they do. So <laughs> we're going to we're gonna go through this list here, but that just reminded me. I mean, we just found out that some friends of ours, his folks sold their house in the fall. And they can't find the new house yet. So they're living with them. And so you're saying, even though it's temporary, 
they're they're residents of the household now and they're going to have regular access to the wow. vehicle. Okay. And so you want to at least disclose to your insurance company that that person is now in the home. They may not charge for it. They may say they need to charge for it, but make sure you talk to your agent. Yep. And All right. We've got uh, we've got more to hit with that as far as communicating to your insurance agent. So that and more com- coming up here on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. All right, YouTube, thanks for being with us. This is the Wise Money Show, and this is the Wise Money Show channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button as well as hit that bell to make sure you're notified of all future content. If you like this episode, you want to share it, I'd encourage you to do so. Pound that thumbs up button. Leave comments, questions below. We will get back to you. Thank you very much. All right. Um. That's a good one to start out with, and I'm sorry that I threw that at you right when we had no time left. But, <coughs> That's okay. Um, this? Yeah. Kevin just told me to talk louder, more. No, I said just use your leadership yes. voice. Because yeah. we, you went into the talk very softly mode like this, you do. which is fine. You but, go back and forth, too, yeah. which is making it hard. Yeah, okay. so just. Sorry. No. Nope. I should know this because I manage a soundboard at church for praise team. Yeah. It's like, turn your mic up, turn your mic down, turn your mic up. Right, so we just want to keep the mic right where it is, and you rock it. Don't get too excited. Rock the mic. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so I don't know if you have a list of other things, but that's a that's a great one to start out with. And so just a, a really quick bonus content. So, yeah, mom and dad have been living with them, and they've got four kids. And it is uh, – so it's a full household. And that's now been three months so I mean, they probably have their own months. car insurance, so they're more than likely going to have coverage. What where it gets tricky is if they try to pop into the kid's car. Yeah, because now they have regular access to that vehicle, so permissive use no longer applies. Well, he's a cop, so I don't think they're jumping in there. So <laughs> no, but it, he's a detective. It, when you when you look at that, they should for sure have content coverage, right? If all their contents are in, like almost like a renter's policy. Well, actually, their home. Their homeowner's insurance will cover, we'll cover that. the parents' contents. All of the parents' contents. Uh, well, up to their limit. So if their limit is enough to cover both households, if they're all under that roof, but if the parents have a storage unit or something else, they're probably going to want runners for that. Yeah. I wonder, that could be a topic <coughs> that we hit because this is unique in that mom and dad are moving back in, but typically kids move back in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and, I have a listener question about that. It's, it's blood relatives and adoption. So if it's a blood relative or adoption – then the homeowner's contents are, are going to be covered for those people. Well, Kevin, feel free to so, type okay. that into the queue if you want, or you can just share it when we get to um... – Yeah, So because because if I, had a, if I had renter's insurance and car insurance, and then I dropped my renter's insurance because I'm a blood relative of the place that I moved into. But you into. lose your liability, so there's that too. Like, huh? So – if you want if you want liability coverage for yourself, you still would want renter's insurance. So there's still a reason to carry. But if I drop my renter's insurance, I does my home ins- does my auto insurance go up because now I don't have a multi policy discount? Yep. Fabulous. This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> All right, let's pick it back up on what other circumstances would should you reach out to your insurance, and then we'll get into. Again, trying to find how do you get the right coverage and the details and that. So, All right. how often should you review your home and auto insurance? And really, what what needs to happen in your life for you to proactively reach out to your insurance agent and communicate some some changes? That's what we're talking about today. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm your host. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn, and insurance agent and expert, Alicia Boehner. Thank you to the attorneys at South Bank Legal, as well as First State Bank, for making the Wise Money Show possible. We appreciate that. For staying up to date on all Wise Money content, you'll find us online, wisemoneyshow.com. You submit questions right there and all sorts of things. And then wherever you're at on social media, you'll find the Wise Money Show there as well. Just search the Wise Money Show, subscribe to it, submit questions there as well, and you can stay up to date. All right, so life happens, and it happens fast. We make decisions, and we're not always thinking about the insurance. In fact, sometimes 
we don't want to think about it because we're afraid that our premium might go up. But what sorts of things need to happen where you should reach out to your insurance agent? At least you left off with a doozy, which is someone moves into the house, kids move back temporarily, or maybe parents move back in. You need to communicate that. What other things would you expect someone to reach out to you and communicate? Yeah. So if someone's going to change how they're using their vehicle, maybe they were using it just to drive back and forth to work, but now they're using it for true business purposes. That's something that we would want to know and be proactively told um, to save yourself some money. If your mileage is going to go down substantially, you might want to contact your agent. That might impact some discounts that could be available to you. And on the home side, it's more important than ever because that's where we see more things slip under the radar. So if you make substantial improvements, you're adding an addition. Um, if you you know, purchase something that's either high in value sentimentally or monetarily and you want to make sure that's covered properly, you would want to call. If you replace your roof, call your agent immediately. It could change your coverage that you have available and it also could impact pricing. So those are just a few other examples. Wow. And I can I throw some in there? Absolutely. So if you added a security system, yeah. a lot of people are doing that these days. Hey, does, does the ring doorbell count? I mean, that's not really security, no. is it? No, okay. it has to either be a central alarm that reports to a third party or directly to the police okay. fire. There is a local alarm. You could count that maybe. I don't know if they're counting that as a local alarm or not. I can look into that. What's a local alarm? It means... Uh, it would just ring at your house if someone tried to enter. They call that a local alarm, and there's a very small discount for that. It's not very substantial, but there is a small discount. They, they, might, they might count ring as that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, do they, do, would the gunshot register on that local alarm? <laughs> um, so the, so uh, marriage or divorce? Yep. That's, that's a, that is that's actually, a huge one. That is a huge one. Do you want to just say some a, a little something about that? Because – it, it we've been it's it's been interesting if if we've worked with clients for a while and then they say hey we're this this is not going to last we are separating we're going to get divorced what have you and so there are certain from a financial planner perspective typically it doesn't work to continue to work with the same financial advisor because now you have instead of two parties that have an identical interest, you have two parties that have conflicted interests. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's the great thing about having 10 client-facing certified financial planners is that within our firm, if you've enjoyed us preparing your taxes, doing your financial plan, helping with your investments, taking care of your insurance needs. You don't have to uproot that. You can find a relationship with someone else in the firm that might fit you even better. Mm -hmm. But so, okay, so what are the, what are those ramifications? So for marriage and divorce, it can be really tricky because often someone's leaving the house. So that car is now taken elsewhere. It's being garaged elsewhere. A lot of times, People, one spouse may own one car, another spouse may own another car, and they're not even properly registered. The spouse that moves out might be taking a vehicle that doesn't even belong to her. So it's really important to change the coverages and the policies to align with that, especially once they know what the decision is going to be, whether they're going to be staying together. And and hopefully, if you're ever in that situation, at least from what I've seen, I mean, you try everything to reconcile. Yeah. And I believe in reconciliation. I've seen people up to the brink and then and then... Um, and then reconcile, which is awesome. However, in the steps along the way, you know, you could live apart or you could make some big changes in your life before the divorce. And it's probably prudent to communicate that to your, to your agent. If you, if you move out and are living in an apartment, you need to communicate that to your agent. Yeah, because your your contents coverage, it's going to impact that as well. Now you have another residence that you're living at where your belongings are kept, and yeah. you've taken some of them out of the house. Some of them might still be in the home. Some of them could even be in a storage unit, and all of that can get kind of tricky under okay. homeowner's insurance. Okay, so uh, so you put it in a swimming pool. Of course, you're going to call your agent. Yep. You better. Yep. What about the uh, trampoline? What, what about the trampoline <laughs> that you get as a gift yeah, from someone? Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. You should probably call your agent for the trampoline. Um trying to think of any others off you, the top of my head. Go ahead, Kevin. Well, if you're taking on uh, you know, financial responsibility for an aging parent or if a if if that if that aging parent is moving into your house. Yep. Um 
And of course, if you're, if, if you said we said buying and selling uh, of of a home, but buying another property, um, even if it's just land, mm-hmm. um, you want to be talking to your agent uh, when you refinance your home. Yep, that's you, a great one. And and why is that? Um, a lot of people will do what's called escrowing their homeowner's insurance premiums, which means that they are going to have the bank pay their premium for them. So if you have your loan with one bank and you change it and we don't know the bill is going to go to the wrong bank and that bill will not be paid and then your insurance, you'll get the nasty notice that they're going to cancel for non-payment of premium. And so that can be avoided if you call us for that. Hopefully that's caught because you're curious about getting coverage on that new home. Yeah. But the other thing is with the with the car, if you have a car loan, and and I don't fully understand this, but I there's this idea of forced placed insurance. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So forced placed insurance is if you are supposed to have insurance on the car and for some reason or other, the auto insurance or the lender doesn't realize that that coverage is there, then if they think that's gone, they'll do forced place insurance, which means, hey, you have to have coverage for this vehicle on your loan. We don't see a current policy. We're giving you one, and we're going to charge you double, triple what it would normally be for that coverage. Yeah. Mm. Uh, nothing worse than the old triple, double. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we. So any other instances where you would really expect someone to reach out to you, and and, and then. And then when when should someone expect their insurance agent to reach out to them? I guess one other I'll throw in is if you're going to change how your home is deeded or how your vehicle is titled. So right now you maybe own the vehicle in your personal name and you're going to change that to a business name or you're maybe putting your home in the name of a trust or an estate, that can impact coverage and we want you to call us for that as well. That's another good one. Fabulous. And, good or one. or um, coming into an inheritance. If your net worth changes yeah. dramatically, I mean, this is this is the question that I would ask you. Does your insurance agent know within a half million dollars what your net worth is? Because if they don't know what your net worth is, it's unlikely that they know how to transfer the risk that you're subject to. Because if you have nothing – you don't need to insure a lot. <laughs> but if you've got a lot, you want to make sure you're covering and you're transferring that risk. So how often should someone expect to hear from their agent? I think every year, every other year is pretty common with most agencies. Um, I have had a lot of people say, I haven't heard from my agent in a long, long time. And mm-hmm. so I think it really does vary from agency to agency. But Traditionally, annually, or every other year is common. We have, you know, we, we Kevin set the business up intentionally, at, you know, 25 years ago, and then as we've as we've grown, um, we've set it up intentionally that the advice, comprehensive financial planning, the one plan advice is packaged here, but then as much of the experts that might need to help implement that plan are here on the team as well, and so. On a regular basis, we're meeting with clients and we're hearing about putting the pool in and buying that next car and the dream home or the vacation home and those things. And so we're at an advantage, you know, that 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 we're the the in, the financial advisor is insurance licensed and certainly is an expert like Alicia getting in the weeds, but at least as a generalist and knows. And so we're touching base more frequently. But if you don't have that, I would I would tell you to get it. And then make sure that you're reaching out and connecting with your insurance agent. We want to talk about the process Kevin mentioned about making sure that your insurance agent knows your financial condition so that they know how to best recommend coverage. And then we've got great questions as well. So that more coming up here on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. All right, let's just have this be a short break. Um, it sounded like Alicia was much better, the volume <laughs> yeah. and um, great. Okay, so what are we hitting right now? Um, <coughs> So at a high level, Kevin, and it's just you already sort of mentioned it. So it's just really, really quick. How would someone know what coverage they need? 
And so one plan. and So so, it's, so are you asking Alicia that? Am I asking Alicia that? I'm asking you that. You're asking me that. Yeah. And then Alicia, from that high level, how, you know, what sort of details does an insurance agent then get involved with to make sure the right coverage is in place? I'm hoping that that just takes, I just want to share a little bit of the process here at KFG because that's what I would hope people would get. So you want to hear my story? Can yeah. <coughs> Hopefully that's five minutes or so and we can start getting into questions. <laughs> My story is about 15. <laughs> Make it five. <laughs> All right. Ready? This is segment three. How do you know what process do you go through to make sure that you've got the right coverage or the best insurance coverage for your overall financial situation. That's what's coming up here. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and insurance agent, Alicia Boehner. Thank you to Bethel University Adult and Graduate Studies, as well as Diane Bennett and the Inspired Homes team for making the Wise Money Show possible. If you're not listening on the YouTube channel, I'd encourage you to do so. You'll find us there. Just go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show. Subscribe to it and hit that bell so that you're made aware of every episode that we post as well as every vlog and other informational videos about taking your next wise step in your financial life. All of that's there on YouTube, so subscribe, hit that thumbs up, share it. We'd appreciate that. All right, so we talked earlier about, well, it's got to start with, you know, it's got to start with making sure that you've got the right coverage for your overall financial situation. Then from there, as life changes, how do you make sure everything stays updated? But how do you how do you make sure you've got the right coverage to begin with? I mean, we have a very strong belief as to how that starts. So Kevin, can you share a little bit about that? And then Alicia, let's find out about the details then. Right, so there are six areas of financial planning, and we believe that everyone should work with a financial planner. If you're going to work with a financial planner, make sure you're working with one who is certified. There are lots of financial advisors uh, out there who sell investments. Doesn't make them bad people. It's just they sell investments. Now, they might tell you they do financial planning or financial planning can be accomplished on the back of a napkin or um, an envelope or fill in the blank. It just, it can't. So, um, we believe when you when you look at the six areas of financial planning, protection planning is one of those six areas, and it has to make sense because when you start in with financially, this is the interesting thing that you know we will sometimes talk about how educationally um, people aren't very well equipped going through um, K through twelve, and then even in college. And but the reality is, e- even the equipping that you get at that time. It's likely that you don't have any money anyway, so the equipping is theoretical. Um, it's abstract. It's not practical. And so but as soon as you um, finish whatever level of schooling you're going to and you go on to the, the work world, then you have to make some decisions. Well, the, what the, the coverage that you need right as you're getting started is very different than the coverage you will need over time, because you are the uh, golden goose. And so you will lay these golden eggs. And it's important that when you have no golden eggs to cover or insure, your coverage looks different than when you've got a nest full of these golden eggs that you want to make sure that you're covering. I um, am have a little bit different perspective because in doing this for the last 26 years, I have seen the financial impact and calamity that is brought about when people have either the wrong types of insurance or they don't have it. And so I and for me, the the most meaningful things that I've seen is with uh, life insurance, disability insurance and long term care. That's not what we're talking about on this show, but I've certainly seen the ramifications of those. So from an early age, I made sure that I was always fully protected. And um, and then with my home and auto, I made sure that I had great protection. So I had high underlying limits, plus I had an umbrella policy to cover everything. 
And because I said, well, at some point in the future, in the event that I actually have stuff, I want to be protected. And we lived on Lawrence Street and we had this tree in the backyard that was perfect for climbing. And so all the kids in the neighborhood loved to come and climb the tree. And my neighbor, uh, June, who was 75 years old at the time, said, you shouldn't let those kids climb in your tree. And um, I said, June, it's why I have an umbrella policy. And I know that makes the insurance agents go a little crazy. But at some point in time, um, you you can't keep the kids out of your tree, especially if you're not there to keep them out of your tree. <laughs> so um, this is so I've always said wear a belt and suspenders. And as I've worked on my financial plan with my planner as well as with my wife, um, as she looks at what we pay, she's like, "Isn't that a lot of money to pay for insurance?" And I said, "Well, it is, but if." If I have to work three extra years of my career to pay for it and I'm not disabled and I'm not in a nursing home and I'm not dead, I'll be able to work those three extra years. But if I am disabled or in a nursing home or dead, are you – will be devastated yeah. emotionally, but you're not going to be devastated financially. Yeah. So the whole idea with insurance is to protect against a financial devastation, a financial tsunami that you could never recover from. And you're a certified financial planner providing one plan, looking at all six of those areas that Kevin mentioned, all tied together and how they work together. It's going to make sure that you've got coverage that's consistent and appropriate to make sure that Whatever might be emotionally damaging shouldn't be a financial tsunami, right? Mm -hmm. From there, from the advice of high level what you need, you then need to be working with an expert to get all the details right. So, Alicia, just really quick, what sorts of details, I guess, within our team, how's it, where, is it, where does it go from there to make sure the details are right? Yeah, so on the auto side, we're going to ask a lot of questions for the drivers, verify again who's coming in or going out of the house, their ages, um, driver assignments to cars, we want to check that. For vehicles, we want to make sure that we have all the vehicles insured because people buy cars and they forget to call you. Yeah. Um, mileage, usage, annual mileage of those vehicles, the title, the registration, the garaging location where they're keeping that. And then other, you guys have already hit on some of these, the financial impact such as their cash reserves because, you know, maybe their cash flow has changed and they can now afford a higher deductible or, you know, maybe something else has happened and they can't afford that high deductible that they do have. We want to be, be sure we're catching that as well as all the details on the house, you know, doing a new home replacement cost estimator, which is just a fancy way of saying, let's review the details of your house and make sure that if you told us you had laminate floors, you haven't replaced those with ceramic tile or hardwood or something that's, you know, very different in quality. I, I think those questions, I, that's the reason why I wanted to get into this, because, because as you're listening to this, I want you to know that your insurance coverage is there for a purpose. It's not just, well, just can't you get something in place? I don't want to ask, I don't want to answer all these questions. Can you just give me some coverage? No, you need to make sure that that coverage fits with all six areas of your financial life. And then you need to make sure that that coverage is consistent with your specific needs. Mm -hmm. And so knowing how much of your house is hardwood versus carpet <laughs> versus concrete, you know, or whatever, <laughs> that's important to figure out that if that tornado whips through the, the neighborhood, you can rebuild your house. Yeah, we lived in a house that for what we bought it for would have cost twice that to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. So it's in and that is not an unusual situation. Nope. So this is where you look at that and you're like, well, I only I paid X for it. I don't want to insure it for two X. Right. And but the reality is if that house burnt to the ground, granted the dirt's not going to burn, but if the, there would be debris removal and then we're putting the house back up, yeah, you want to know what would the cost of that be. Yeah. So it should be a thorough process. And I understand, uh, you know, we, we live in a in an age where we want everything quick and, and I'm I agree with that too, and your insurance agent feels that too. They want it, they want it quick as well, but they but it's got to be right as yeah. well. Because when a need comes up, you want to make sure that you've got it, you've got it right. So anything else you would add, Alicia, about the process or um, making sure that you've got the right details in place? 
No, I would just say, you know, we're going to do our best to reach out to you. But also, if you're not sure, if something seems like, well, I wonder how that changes my insurance. People sometimes think that, but they don't call. Yeah. Call. If you have that question, if you have something that just passes through your mind, like, oh, I wonder, don't ignore that. Send us an email or, you know, give your agent a call to find out. Or text. Or text. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I I shared before my... My favorite commercials are insurance commercials, so I think, you know, stop knocking on wood, those sorts of things. No, just have a relationship Mm -hmm. with your insurance agent and make sure that agent is working with your comprehensive financial planner so that you've got the right professionals and you've got the right stuff for your overall specific financial situation. Got a great question here from Gretchen we're going to hit in just a moment. When you're on Social Security, when you're retired... Should you expect your insurance premiums to go down because you're driving less or maybe your life has changed? Well, there might be some other circumstances that push that premium right back up. So we've got that and more coming up here on The Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. All right. We're going to hit two. So we'll hit that question around Social Security and then I already hit that one down there. Well, oh, your car insurance going up when you buy a new car. Mm, Okay. Because that could get into, you know, which I think you've said this has changed, but who do you lay, list as the head as the driver on that vehicle or if you've got kids and that sort of stuff. So uh, and we'll hit the Social Security one and then we'll hit that one. Are you saying because there's a couple things. One is your car insurance going up when you have a new to you car versus a new car and <laughs> the uh, – I hit both. I the, quest, the question is new, new car. we're getting a new car. Right. How much should I expect? But that could easily easily be flipped to used car. Yeah. Well, because I to me the idea of gap insurance is fascinating. Ooh. Right. Okay. Let's hustle. Insure your gap. Yeah. Uh. Great. All right. Four segment land of the plane. We're gonna let's try to hit this all is the that. Four segment. Yeah. Not Shoot, crazy. Baby. So, all right. Thanks for being with us today. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFC studios, Kevin Corhorn and insurance expert Alicia Boehner. If you're not listening to the Wise Money Show on podcast, I'd encourage you to do so. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you'll find the Wise Money Show. Just search that and subscribe to it. Rate the show as well as leave comments. That helps other people who are out there in the vast podcast world looking for wise financial principles. That helps them find us. So we appreciate that. Plus the feedback. We appreciate that as well. So, all right. We are in my favorite segment, my favorite part of every show, and that is questions from fans of the show. This first one is very, very interesting. It's from Gretchen. She's 66, lives in Mishawaka. Now that my husband and I are both retired and on Social Security, should we expect our insurance premiums to go down since we're not driving as much? Good question. Well, what changed? That's what I'm going to ask. Have you did were we notified that you retired? Ah, so question okay. number one, because we would have been charging you as though you were commuting to and from work. Now we can change that to pleasure use. So that could lower ah. rates a little bit there with pleasure use. Um, unfortunately, one negative thing about the insurance industry is that it it is still a discriminatory industry. So generally, as you get older, the older you get, your rates start to go up again. So that's unfortunate. (laughs) I mean, can we just, let's just clarify that right now. So the insurance industry is not discriminatory. Based on data. The the insurance industry (laughs) changes, there's a, there's a a certain volume of risk. As that risk increases, so do your so do your uh, it's all based on data be, actuaries because you could have a credit score so 800 is the perfect credit score you could have a credit score of 550 and be an amazing driver and you could say listen even though i have a horrible credit score i'm an amazing driver so it's not fair that you charge me more for my insurance because i'm totally irresponsible with my finances and that's discriminatory 
And I would say, well, here's the deal. The insurance companies have studied these things and statistically they know because the insurance companies aren't short on data. Right. right. It's all data. They mm-hmm. they know and the insurance companies make money. They are in it to make money, so they're going to win. Yeah. So if you if you put yourself in a group, if I put myself in a group, I, if I get a DUI, I just put myself in a different group. So they're going to therefore, and we'll use Alicia's word, discriminate <laughs> against me because they don't like people who drink alcohol and then get behind the wheel of a car. Because t- the the damage that those people tend to do is pretty significant. So yes, the, it, whether we say discriminate or whether we say adjust rates based on risk, mm. yeah. the insurance companies do that for sure. And yeah. it's different from state to state. So it just depends and it's on different, where you live. And it's different from company to company. It is, mm-hmm. yes. Yep. So that would change. The other thing, though, that could possibly change is some companies do have discounts for older drivers. Oh. So while you may see your rate go up because of your age, you might also see some discounts depending upon your age. Um, so there's just a lot of factors that can play in. Well, uh, appropriate question that we're talking about, when should you communicate with your insurance agent? And I'm assuming they weren't on the list when you were making your rounds about, hey, I retired. This Mm -hmm. is exciting. They probably weren't on that list of communication. And it sounds like they should be for, you know, commuting and discounts and those sorts of things. So, And in the state of Michigan, if you're retired and you're on Medicare, you could reject personal injury protection, which is, again, the coverage that pays for you, your medical bills, um, you could reject that entirely. Uh, so under so no I can program. already or I will be able to? You will be able to. In July? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Great question, Gretchen. Thank you very much. Uh, next question is from Sam, age 56 in Edwardsburg. My wife and I bought a new car and our car insurance went up considerably. Is that to be expected? I assume so. But how much is a reasonable amount to expect it to increase? Is there a reasonable amount? I mean, is there the same thing from buying uh, the, the the new Tesla tank to buying a Ford Focus? I mean, the, the one with the bulletproof windows. That's right. Yeah. So insurance companies, they assign what's called a symbol to a vehicle. And really what that is, is they'll look at the vehicle and say, well, what does it cost us? So what does it cost us to repair the vehicle? Are the parts expensive to replace on this vehicle? Or are they less expensive? They also look at things like the damageability of that vehicle. So if you crash two vehicles that are in a similar class, which one sustains more damage and will ultimately cost the company more? And then they also look at frequency of theft. Is a particular vehicle more likely to be stolen than another? All of that stuff gets compiled to develop this symbol that's assigned. And typically, the higher the symbol is, the more the insurance will cost on the vehicle. So it just depends on what you buy. Yeah, yeah, that is fascinating. I, you learn something new every day. So insurance companies assign a symbol to a vehicle. I thought that was only rock stars. Okay. <laughs> that assigned symbols dad to the, No, well, it, it was a little bit of a dad joke. But so basically what you're suggesting is you may want to get in touch with your agent before you buy the new vehicle. Yes, because we can run some figures to tell you if you're looking at dramatically different types of vehicles, what would be more expensive or less expensive. It also depends on who is driving the vehicle. Well, so so – Sam's question was a, a new vehicle. And so I'm assuming you took the old vehicle and traded it in or you sold it. But let's just flip the scenario and say you bought a new vehicle because you were sending yours now to Junior, who was going to drive it, who just turned 17. Mm-hmm. And so how does that scenario work? Can you play the um, primary driver uh, roulette there and just um, f- move that around to try to get the cheapest insurance? Uh, you, <laughs> that's a very loaded question. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, loaded question. That's a, that's a mom joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Oh, loaded my. dice at the roulette okay. table. So, I think you should be strategic personally. I think you should give Junior the vehicle that does not have full coverage if you can aff- afford to have one vehicle without full coverage because that will cost you the less you can bank more savings that way. You, even though Junior wants to drive the Tesla. 
mm-hmm. please, for the love, don't let Junior drive the Tesla. That will cost you a ton of money to have Junior driving the Tesla. I thought some insurance car- rating. carriers were doing household <laughs> yes, rating, getting so rid of this. So primary. it depends. It depends on the company. There mm-hmm. is household rating where they'll spread it among all the cars, but some companies do still assign a vehicle. They to give your household drive. a symbol. Yeah. They- <laughs> okay. So, so you know, I just I threw out the the Tesla tank just because I'm fascinated by that thing, but. Um, from your perspective, and Alicia, you're not a car expert, but as an insurance expert, these these cars that are we're driving around that have all sorts of technology in them, mm-hmm. are they cheaper to insure or are they more expensive? I would hope cheaper because they've got all this accident prevention. You know, they'll keep you in your lane. They'll parallel park for you. They'll, you know, do all sorts of things, shine your shoes as you're driving. Um, but I, with all those widgets in there, it's harder – I assume, more expensive to replace that stuff. Yeah, I don't know how many people have noticed, but car auto rates have been steadily increasing. And a lot of that is because the cost to repair vehicles uh, is just so much higher with all of the computer technology that's now in them. Um, Windshields are a good example. An old school windshield without a lot of, you know, sensory technology could be 200 bucks, you know, on a fancy car, a grand or more. So there's just a big difference in the cost. And when those costs hit the insurance company, generally those do eventually make their way back to. Well, they have to. You know, the insurance company is the house. If you know, we're not. I'm not a. I'm not into gambling, personally. But yeah, the insurance company. We've already talked about the the simulation idea. They're going to win. So they they use these actuaries that look at all sorts of laws of big numbers, and then they say, therefore, we should price it this way, which means we're going to be assured of a certain profit. So. Which, which can be so confusing to explain to clients because now the costs of the parts are more, so the rate of the vehicle is more, but they're also giving discounts for some of those safety features like you mentioned. So people don't understand, I have all these new security and safety features. Why is my rate not going down when mm-hmm. really it's still costing the company more overall? So we're in the new decade. Uh, in the next decade, I wonder what driving will be like. Mm-hmm. I wonder what cars will be like, and therefore I wonder what insurance, auto insurance will be like. And uh, the path from here to there is likely going to be stop and start. <laughs> I think you get the pun there. Um, like it might not, it's going to be a little interesting, but make sure that you've got the right coverage and that you're working with an insurance agent to make sure that that is all consistent with your overall financial life. So Alicia, thanks for being on the show again. It's all the time we have for today. On behalf of Kevin Corhorn, Alicia Boehner, myself, and all of us at Corhorn Financial Group, Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group, KFG Wealth Management, LLC, and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.